In my last tutorial, I shared how to use dynamic parameters to create animation and VFX. But I realized I didn't actually talk about Niagara Systems and its relationship to materials in this channel before. So today, I thought I could share some high-level view of how Niagara works, some basic Niagara concepts, and its relationship to a material. This video is a short intro to a series that I'm planning to teach beginners how to use Niagara Systems, featuring this waterfall that I made. But I'll share more about that later. Let's get started. If you've been familiar with VFX for a while now, you may have used Cascade to create VFX in Unreal Engine. But as games evolve, Cascade has reached certain limits and Niagara System is Unreal Engine's latest solution to create VFX. Now the way that I understand Niagara Systems can be broken down into a hierarchy structure. At the top, we have Systems. A system can contain several emitters, and each emitter spawns particles. Inside each emitter, we have modules that can control the particle's behavior such as its position, velocity, and color. Each module is assigned to a group in an emitter's stack to determine when this module's effect will take place. So let's look at an example to understand this better. First of all, let's create a Niagara system. So we can right click and select Niagara systems, new systems from selected emitters, and then choose the fountain and click on the green add button. So when we click finish, we will have a new Niagara system created. Just double click to open it and we have the basic fountain. So inside this whole thing here is our Niagara systems and the brown rectangle here is a emitter. So this emitter now is spawning sprites that shoots them out like a fountain. And each column here in this emitter stack is called a module. Stuff like spawn rate or shape location or drag, these are all modules, each in a different group. So emitter spawn, emitter update, these are called groups in Niagara systems. And depending on what group each module is in, that will determine when this module will take effect. So to better understand this, let's start by disabling some of these modules. So right now we only have this shape location module on. So it's basically just spawning these sprites in a sphere. So if we look closely here, you can see it's spawning these circle sprites in a sphere location. Now, if we turn on our first module at velocity, since this module is placed inside the particle spawn groups, this means that every time we spawn a particle, it's going to give it a initial velocity. Now let's turn on the drag in the particle update, which means this module will now add drag to every frame that this particle is alive. And we can give it a bigger drag to see this better in preview. So you can see the particles has an initial velocity that's coming from the add velocity module here. And then the drag module will slow it down. So you can see its velocity gets slowed down after spawning. Now finally, we can turn on the gravity force, which means it will give the particle a gravity towards the negative Z direction here. And that's how we get this fountain shape sprite emitter. Now finally, to let particles to actually get rendered into our games, we need to assign a render. Located at the bottom of a emitter, there are several types of renderers that we use depending on what we want to achieve. We have a sprite renderer to render out a simple billboard plane, a mesh renderer to render out an actual 3D mesh, or a ribbon renderer to render out a trail-like effect. This is also where we assign the materials that we want to use on this particle. So now here's a concept that tremendously helped me understand how Niagara system works. If we look at a particle from a computer's point of view, each particle is just a data structure containing a bunch of variables representing the lifetime, the color, the position, etc. All the modules are essentially doing calculations and modifying these data. And these data are then sent to the render to actually get rendered out in our game. So what VFX is at the lowest level is just animating the values of these data so the renderer can do its magic and create the beautiful explosions that we see. So to show this, we can actually add multiple renderers to the same emitter. And here's the same fountain emitter that we showed earlier with just some different parameters. 
I have a bigger drag, I have gravity force still on, and also add velocity here. Now right now I only have our sprite render turned on, but actually I have a ribbon render here with the default ribbon material assigned. And if we just turn this on, we can see that now it's connecting each sprite particles with a ribbon. Here I have another mesh render with a arrow mesh assigned on it. And you can see it's adding another mesh onto each particles. So all these renders have got the same data, like these particle position, particle color, particle velocity, stuff like that. They all got the same data from the particle. But because of the different renders and material they're assigned, we see a different outcome. For a sprite is the simple circle here we see. And then the ribbon render will connect all these particles. And then the mesh render adds this arrow onto each particle. Now with a better understanding of Niagara systems in mind, we can now understand what dynamic parameters actually do. Just like position or color, they're just another data that a particle carries. But what's special about dynamic parameters is that they're actually sent to a material as a parameter, so we can use it to control the materials. So here's a very simple ring material that I made. It's basically calculating the distance of the UV from the center point and then using this sphere mask with the radius parameter and thickness parameter to control the size and the thickness of this ring. So now if we go to its material instance, we can see by changing the radius, we can change the size of this ring and then also the thickness of this ring. So now to control these parameters through a Niagara system, we first need to add a dynamic parameter node. There's four inputs from a dynamic parameter. So we can just rename these in the details panel. I'll rename the first one to radius and the second one to thickness. I'll give it a default value of 0 0.25 and a thickness of 0 0.05. So now we just remove these parameters and connect this to a dynamic parameter instead. So here's a simple emitter that's just a infinite loop with a duration of two and then i'm using spawn burst with a spawn count of one so i'm spawning one sprite for each loop and i already assigned the ring material that we made earlier so you can see it's just spawning one without any animation now so now we can add the dynamic parameter module to control the radius and thickness that we assigned earlier so this module actually reads our material and knows that we already assigned the name of radius and thickness to it. So now what we have to do is click this button here and then search for curve. So basically the curve will animate this value radius according to the particle's normalized age. It's zero means when the particle just spawned and one is when the particle dies. So I kind of want the radius to like expand so I can click on this predefined curve here and I'm just going to set this to 0.4 here. For the thickness, we also assign a curve to it. But here I want to use this curve and also give the scale curve value of 0.1. So now if we hit play, we can see that because of these curves, now we're animating the value of radius and thickness, which is then sent to our material and give us this nice looking motion on a ring material. So to sum up, basically dynamic material parameters is a way for a Niagara system to send a parameter to the material. And since we can animate this value, we can create some interesting motions. I know this ring material may seem very simple, but actually if you apply a texture and work on the material, it can look like a shockwave that we see very often in video games. Hopefully this video will give you some basic concepts about how Niagara system works, but I understand this can be very overwhelming if you just started out on your VFX journey. And that's why I'm planning a tutorial series on Niagara systems. In this series, we will make a Niagara fall using the simplest material which is just a square sprite. All the movement we see here is created by modules in Niagara systems. By taking out the complexity of the material, we can really focus on how these modules work and the power of a Niagara system. 
This series is still in the planning, so I would like to hear what you guys think. What part of Niagara system are you most interested in or what part does it confuses you the most? I'm not trying to show you how to create a specific VFX, but rather teach you the basics of a Niagara system so you can create something of your own. So let me know what you're most interested about in the comment sections below. And as always, if you find this helpful, please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.